Hey guys, what's up? My name is Anthony and welcome to another edition of Being a Sports Talk. Now today I really want to talk about Daniel Jones um, and who he reminds me of a lot because a lot of people are comparing him to Eli Manning, Peyton Manning. He doesn't remind me of those two, mainly because he didn't really get a lot of accolades. You know, Peyton Manning and Eli Manning, they're products of the SEC, tough defenses, and they all got like a really high praise, awards, and things like that, but if you look at Daniel Jones, not much accolades and awards, nothing. Uh, kind of like the patch meme, I won an award. You know, not really that much um, accolades. Wasn't heavily recruited. What um, a couple of comparisons that I mentioned before: Brock Osweiler and Paxton Lynch. Those guys were picked because of their height. Um, I think Daniel Jones is way more athletic than these guys. These guys. Uh, he's way more, he's smarter, he's good pre-snap. Those guys were taken because they were tall and they could see those extra two inches. Um, Brock Osweiler and Paxton Lynch, I haven't really done much research into them. I have done a lot of research into Mitch Trubisky. Yeah, so Paxton Lynch was mainly an athlete before quarterback. From what I read, it's just like, oh yeah, he can make all these amazing plays, extend plays, RPOs, different things like that. But his um, his accuracy lacks. And he tends to lead guys too much. Then um, another time he get throws behind the player. Uh, Paxton didn't have the best. Uh, he didn't have the best scenario with him. But there, there, that was the one quality that he said that they said he was lacking. He did have great leadership skills and different things like that. Brock Osweiler. The thing with Brock Osweiler is that he had good pocket presence. He was good until he started getting a little confidence, and then he was all crazy. This means he lacks discipline. Uh, this means he lacks focus, and he had a lot of turnovers and different things like that. Now, these two guys aren't quite busts in my category. Uh, Mitch Trubisky, the, the jury is still out on him. Now, Mitch Trubisky, um, they, them two don't really match. Mitch Trubisky's more thick. Daniel Jones is more uh, tall and lean than Mitch Trubisky. And Mitch was, quite frankly, better in... Um, better with the Tar Heels. He might have had a little bit better roster. If you look at their senior seasons, Mitch really stood out. Um, even though the record didn't really show it, uh, they did lose their bowl game that year. But, you know, um, th more than 3,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, um, all these accolades and things like that. Um, he, he was, And he was known as one of the top recruits. It wasn't like he came out of nowhere. This guy... Um, yeah, the only reason why I would say they're similar is that both Mitch and Daniel Jones were in the ACC, and they both, you know, when they were picked, it was kind of people were kind of like, "What the hell are you doing?" Uh, we had Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, and a lot of these other guys available, and they were both picked in what was considered to be a weak QB class, uh, and they they kind of have similar play styles. But Daniel Jones is much. Um, it, I'll throw up their, their strengths and weaknesses real quick. But what you can see is uh, it tends that Mitch Trubisky, uh, he, didn't, he was a little more scared with his feet. He didn't want to step and make a throw. And uh, Daniel Jones has, takes a little bit more risks down the field, uh, a little bit more than Mitch did. And um, Daniel Jones initiates contact a little bit more than Mitch did. Uh, it seems like Daniel is a... Uh, a more a smarter quarterback, but Mitch Trubisky is a more a little bit more athletic. Uh, can use his feet a little bit more threat with the RPO. Daniel Jones is just it is what it is, and we're gonna follow the system, and that's it. So is Mitch Trubisky a little bit, but th those are the two. Um, yeah, that's what I can see in those two. But the guy I'd like to compare him to is Matt Ryan. Now, why would this be a good comparison? Well, he's a ten-year starter, never got injured, um, good qualities as a leader. Uh, he, the only thing I question is with this pick, is, you know, Matt Ryan plays indoors for half the year. He plays in Mercedes Benz. He plays in, um, well, the, the, he plays in the, uh, the new stadium they have now. It's not Mercedes Benz. It's some other car, BMW or something. They have, they have a new stadium. And, um, yeah, so the, the Atlanta Falcons play in this kind of temperate climate, but the Giants are going to play outdoors. Now, with the thing that Daniel Jones has is he has a chance to learn they both had the same measurables pretty much, uh, but Daniel Jones is a little bit more athletic than what Matt Ryan was. I don't think they focused that much on athleticism back then in the draft, but you know, Daniel Jones is a little bit more athletic, not not crazily, but um, yeah, if we can, if Daniel Jones is stealing as Matt Ryan, I'm fine with it, or a better version of Matt Ryan, I'm fine with it. Falcons constantly have one of the best offenses in the league. It is helped by a good run game, a good offense. Uh, but right now they have a defensive coordinator in Dan Quinn and Matt Ryan is doing just fine. So if you can ease him, 
if you can ease him into the system, that'd be great. Um, Matt Ryan started off with a defensive-minded coach from Jacksonville. But the good thing is Daniel Jones is being put into a better situation. Matt Ryan had to start day one because of a guy named Michael Vick that got convicted and he went to jail for a couple years for what he did. I think seven, whatever years, doesn't matter for what he did. So Matt Ryan was kind of thrown to the wolves. Uh, he was picked third overall. Daniel Jones picked sixth overall. And I think if if Daniel Jones can end up being uh, um, Matt Ryan, that'd be great. It's kind of, remember the syllable thing mentioned the other day? Matt Ryan, two... Uh, the one syllable and then two, the Daniel Jones and a lot of other quarterbacks like Russell Wilson have two where it's matched like Drew Brees, Nick Foles. You guys get the whole trend. Uh, Terry Bradshaw, you want to throw it back to the uh, old days. Johnny Unitas, not really, but you get the point. Uh, if he, <laughs> this syllable thing, I'm just going to ride this syllable thing until it's, uh, until it's a dead horse. Uh, I've been thinking about it for years, but now I have a platform to do it. So you guys are going to listen to me. The NFL is shifting two different ways. You have a guy that has all the right instincts. Daniel Jones doesn't have the right instinct, like a, a playmaking ability instincts. He just has the instincts just to, you know, make the smartest play. You have those guys. And then you have the guys like Patrick Mahomes and, and Kyler Murray and Baker Mayfield on the other side that are more, um, that, that have more deep field, um, deep field ideas you know we're gonna i'm gonna extend the play and make a huge play Daniel jones is like if i don't see it i'm checking down and th- those are two great qualities just know what you're doing know, uh have a plan and yeah th- i think that's completely fine the uh, the giants uh, apparently a report came out i was right the the redskins were thinking about taking daniel jones there's also another team he, dave gutterman said two teams are thinking about picking daniel jones so secure your guy I don't care. Secure your guy. You had team guys like Paxton Lynch taking 17th. I don't know what Brock Osweiler's taking. But if you have a guys taking late in the first, usually they're not successful. It's really rare that a quarterback picked in the second round, like Drew Locke, by the way, is really successful in this league. And I'm not saying Drew Locke is like Drew Brees. Uh, I'm not saying Drew Locke is, I mean, is going to be a bust. But, you know, the Broncos didn't feel comfortable taking him over Noah Fant. I mean, if he's your quarterback, he's your quarterback. And I, I think that was good value at the time, but there's something to be said about he, we didn't pick him first. Yeah, there's two different layers. There's the top, the your first your first round pick, and then there's your 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 third, fourth, like your Jared Stidham's. I think um, Daniel Jones and Jared Stidham compare fairly well in that they didn't have the best supporting cast. They try to show up in big games like against Clemson against Alabama, but the team is just inferior. And yeah. Um, they're going to be put in a better situation. And I think Daniel Jones is going to be put into a good situation. So I guess to sum it all up, I'm rooting for Daniel Jones. It's been fun for the last couple of days to see like Giants fans' reactions and stuff. And I was one of them. I threw the remote again to the other side of the room, and I was going crazy. I was like, anybody but Daniel Jones. And I was like, Josh Allen, Josh Allen, just Josh Allen. And yeah, so we have to deal with it. We're Giants fans. We're, we're the true guys. Everything is settled. All the Giants fans' opinions are now rationalizing. We're like, okay. Let's think and go how Dave Gettleman thought. Uh, let's move forward. Let's not go crazy because we can't control this. We're always going to stay Giants fans. And, yeah, so, like, the track record between QB 16 to 32 isn't good. And it would be kind of uh, weird trading up from 17 up. I thought they would trade from the early, sec- early second round to the late first round. And I thought that was perfect. Missed out on some day two, uh, day two um, players. But that's okay. We have three elite players. And that's where all the good players were in the beginning. So I, I don't mind it. So, yeah, the only thing, only concern for Daniel Jones is whether he can deal in the elements. Matt Ryan, he's been a dome quarterback. Daniel Jones, he had one game in the rain against Miami, and all of a sudden his accuracy went all over the place. But he makes the right decisions, and I'm for that. If Daniel Jones can end up like Matt Ryan, I'd be thrilled. Uh, a couple, like uh, what my expectations for Daniel Jones, my predictions, he's going to be in the MVP race a couple years, uh, not too many times because he's not really that flashy of a quarterback. He's not going to put up really big numbers. He'll be in the Super Bowl a handful of times, and uh, he'll he'll have um, a, a couple Pro Bowls, like two or three Pro Bowls, and he, his career is going to re- go very much underrated, like Eli Manning's did. Never put up big numbers, but yeah, you know, had some off years, but the, when he was good, he was good. And yeah, kind of like a mid-tier. His his floor is not that low. He's going to keep you in games. He's not going to throw you out of games. He knows his weaknesses. He knows his floor. He knows his uh, athletic abilities and where they where they end pretty much. And yeah, I uh, hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like rating. If you want to see more of these videos, uh, make sure to comment section down, comment section down below. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.